Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love. Praise the Lord, friends. My name is John Nathan Owora. I work with Scripture in Uganda in the northern part of Uganda. That is the northern region. I coordinate at Choli and Lango. It's a good opportunity to be part of this shoot again. In our segment of Embrace, today we'll be handling a key part of Scripture Union teaching, which is quiet time. We shall define what quiet time is, and then we'll go on from there. But before we do this, before we dive into what quiet time is, let us pray. Our Lord and our God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity to learn again. Here we are, we ask that you teach us and help us to be what you want us to be. Our ears are open and they're inclined to your word and to your speaking. May out of the abundance of my mouth, come what comes from the heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we are going to define what quiet time is. So what is quiet time? And you could be thinking, hmm, is it just keeping quiet? Is it just... And that's quiet time? So what is quiet time? In scripture, you know, we define quiet time as a special time that everybody chooses, an individual chooses, to meet God through regular, thoughtful Bible reading and prayer. I will repeat that. It's a special time that I choose or you choose to meet with God. Remember, it is you choosing the time and you choose the time to meet with God through regular. Regular means daily, you have a pattern. Thoughtful, you thinking, Bible reading, you have your Bible, Bible reading and prayer. And remember, this is not done as a group. It's done on an individual basis. It's a special time one chooses to meet with God through regular, thoughtful Bible reading and prayer. It is done as an individual. We're going to find out why should we have quiet time? If I'm reading my Bible, some people call quiet time devotion. We agree. In Scripture Union, we, call, we don't call it devotion. We call it quiet time. So you have a question. Why should I read my Bible? Why should I pray? Why should I have quiet time? And I have 10 reasons that I'm going to help you understand. They're very, very important. Number one, Psalm 119, verse 105, which is also the founding scripture for Scripture Union, says this. It says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So the first reason why we have quiet time is to get guidance in making right decisions. When you're walking, you need a path. You need a clear path. So the word of God is a light. It helps you in walking on a right path and making right decisions. The second reason why we have quiet time comes from Matthew says this. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him Right, and the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. If you fall down and worship me. Jesus answered and said, Get away from me, Satan. The Bible says, You shall worship the Lord your God only. So why do we have quiet time? We have quiet time to have victory over temptation and some of us are tempted in many ways you're tempted to steal you're tempted to fight you're tempted to have sex before marriage you're tempted to abuse and disobey to have victory over that temptation you need the word of god and you need to do quiet time number three psalm 100 psalm 1 i beg your pardon psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 says this Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. 
and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. So reason number three why we do quiet time is we will be blessed and we will prosper. Some of us are looking for blessings. You want someone to lay their hands on your head and pray. No, my friend, to be blessed, one of the, the biggest ways to be blessed is to do quiet time, to understand the blessings that God has actually availed to you. Number three, number four, why do we do quiet time? Psalm 119 verse 9 says this, How can a young man keep his way pure? How can a young lady sitting there keep her way pure? How can a single lady, a single man who is watching, how can you keep your way pure? By guarding and living according to the word of God. So number four, why should we have quiet time? Is to keep our way pure on a daily basis. Friends, purity of mind, purity of heart, and purity of body. How can you keep your way pure? By living according to the ways of God. How do you know the ways of God? By reading scripture every day through quiet time. Number five, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the most popular verse. Why do we need to have quiet time? We need to have quiet time to know the plans that God has for us. Plans for today or each day that I'm alive and plans for future. And he says this, for I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Plans to give you a future and a hope. God has good plans for you. Even the devil doesn't know those plans. But do you remember the devil also has, good, has also plans for you. They may not be good or they may look good at the beginning, but they're dangerous plans. So why do we have quiet time? To know the plans that God has for us. Number six, why should we have quiet time? Why should we have a special time with God? Why should I have time to read the Bible? Why should I have the time to pray? We have quiet time to be encouraged that God keeps his promises. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 tells us this. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we are firm. For God can be trusted. For God can be trusted to keep his word. You can trust God to keep his word. Why do we have quiet time? To trust that God keeps his word. Friends, no matter what you're going through, God has made a promise. And when God makes a promise, he keeps his word. Has he spoken anything to you in your quiet time? Has he spoken anything to you in your devotion? Trust him. He keeps his word. He keeps his word. He promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He keeps his word. Number seven, why should we have quiet time? We have quiet time to bear lasting fruit. Fruit that lasts forever. John chapter 15 verse 16 says this. You did not choose me. Jesus was speaking to us. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Jesus chose us. We did not choose him. So for us to be able to bear lasting fruit in this generation, in the generation to come, and the generation after, we need to bear lasting fruit. How do we bear that lasting fruit? is by knowing how to follow the ways of God through quiet time. Praise the Lord. You are listening and you want your children to live a good life. You want to leave businesses for your children. You want to see that you are doing well in this life and live a good life for your children. You need to have time with God, to know how you can bear lasting fruit. Number eight, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 tells us this. It says this, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. 
<laughs> we need to learn to cast our burdens to the Lord. Why? Because he cares for us on a daily basis. How would you learn to cast your fears, your worries? You're worried about school fees. You're worried about your family. You're worrying about this. You're worried about that. How do you learn to cast your, your fears, your worries to God? You learn this by having a daily devotion. You learn this by having a daily quiet time with the Lord Jesus, with the Lord, the Father of all creation, with the Holy Spirit. It's important you know that quiet time is important. Why? Because in that, you learn to, even you know, when you're at home and there's no food, you cast your worries unto the Lord. When you're worried about tomorrow, you know how tomorrow will be, you cast your worries unto the Lord. Number nine, Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 tells us this. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I'll give you rest. You can find rest in the Lord Jesus when you have quiet time, when you have time to read your Bible, you have time to pray. You know, there are times when you're so full of burdens and you just need to breathe and rest in the Lord. The Lord loves you. He wants to give you rest. But how do you know that the Lord is giving you rest <laughs> when you don't have time with Him. Regular, thoughtful Bible reading and prayer is a solution to finding rest in the Lord Jesus. Just knowing that you can rest in Him. And lastly, why should we have quiet time? Number 10, Zephaniah. I like that name, Zephaniah. Other people say Zephaniah. In the local language, Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Oh, Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17 says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With His love, He will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. And First John chapter 4, verse 9 and 10 says this, This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So why do we have quiet time? According to Zephaniah and 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, 10, to always remember that God is with us. Always remember that God is with you. So every day when you read scripture, when you have time to pray, you are reminded that God is with you through every pain, through every celebration. Those are the 10 reasons why we have quiet time. We will move on now to who should have quiet time. Who should have a personal devotion? Who should have a daily devotion with the Lord Jesus? The answer is simple. Every child of God, whether you're a teacher, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a student, you're a clergy. I want to say clergy, I mean priests, reverends, lay readers, catechists. You need to have quiet time. Every child of God. Parents. You need to have quiet time. There are times when you need rest. Time when you need assurance. Quiet time is a solution for you. Personal daily devotion. Going for fellowship is good. Praying is good. But daily devotion, having personal time with the Lord is very important. When should you have quiet time? People should ask, but when should I have quiet time? When? The answers are simple. Before you leave for school, if you're a student, before you go to work, if you're working, early morning when you wake up, the first thing you do is have quiet time. Have at least time to speak with the Lord and the Lord speaks to you. The second uh, way you should have quiet time, or why should you have quiet time, when should you have quiet time, is if you are at home and you're feeling fresh and you are alert. Reading the word of God when you are fresh and alert is cool, is good. Not when you're very tired and you're about to doze. You can also have quiet time after school or after work or when you have a break at school or at work. You have a break time. You, you set that one. And the time must be a pattern every time. If it is 10 o'clock for you every day, use 10 o'clock in the morning. If it's before you go to sleep, it should be before you go to sleep. Don't shift patterns. 
it should be a specific pattern. You can also have your quiet time at bedtime before you sleep. <laughs> Just make sure you don't doze. Quiet time. It should be. Have a pattern. Now, I'll ask a question, or you may be asking a question. What do we need for quiet time? You, what do you need for quiet time? When, what do you need to read your Bible or to have devotion with Jesus? One, you need a Bible. It is quiet time. You need a Bible. Number one, a Bible. Why? Because the Bible contains the Word of God. And it is the one, from what we learned, why should we have quiet time? It has all those reasons. It will give you rest. It's the Word of God. So the first item is a Bible. The second item you need is a notebook and a pen. The notebook and pen for writing down what God speaks to you. You need a notebook and a pen. The third thing you need is a Bible guide. In Scripture Union, we have Bible guides. We have daily power for youth and for family altars. We have daily guide for adults. We have God and me for children. We have Kisumuluzo in Uganda for the Uganda speakers. We have Kishumuluzo. We have uh, Ekishumuluzo for those from Western Uganda. These help you in reading your Bible every day. That's what we call a Bible guide. I want to encourage you guys to have a Bible guide from Scripture Union. They, we produce them every year and they could help you. You need a convenient place, a place which is which you can sit comfortably without dozing or without being distracted. You also need a quiet place, a quiet place where there's no distraction, like where I am right now is quiet. It's a comfortable place for me to do quiet time. Lastly, you need a good attitude. Why are you doing quiet time? Some people do quiet time because I just want to read my Bible, because they have forced me. The attitude should be, that I want God to speak to me and I want him to help me. From here, we shall move on. We shall move on to the next step and we shall find out how do we have quiet time? Which are the steps for quiet time? There are five steps for quiet time and I'm going to quickly go over them. So when you sit down, when, when you, you've prepared yourself, you have your Bible, you have your convenient place, you have all the things you need. How do you do quiet time? You have a specific time. Maybe it's break time every day. It's lunch time every day. Or before you leave for work or you leave for school. How do you do quiet time? There are five. And in scripture, you know, we like using actions. So one is pray. Begin with a short prayer that God will help you understand what you are reading. Psalm 119 verse 18 says this. Open my eyes. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your word. I may see wonderful things in your law. So the first step is pray. Start with a short prayer. Let it not be too long. And the symbol we normally use is pray. So the first one is pray. Step number two is read. If you have a daily, a daily devotional, a daily guide from Scripture Union, you open your guide, you get the portion for that day, and then you open your Bible. You put the guide down and then you read your Bible. As you're reading, as you're reading, we encourage you to get a scripture in your guide. It is very systematic from January to December. So second step is read. And as you're reading in your notebook, you are thinking, you're asking yourself questions like, what do these verses mean? What does God want you to learn from them? Does this verse tell you something about God the Father? or God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit? Do you find a special promise or a command from God to you? Does the verse mention something God wants you to stop doing? So as you answer those questions, you are thinking and you are writing down in your book. So step one is pray to God. Step two is read from the Bible. Step three is think. As you're thinking, you're writing down your Bible. Step four, is pray again. Once you have written down things in your Bible, you pray again. You praying again is one way to close your time with God. That's a beautiful way. God has spoken to you. You're asking God to help you to go and do what he has taught you. If you read about something God wants you to do, ask him to help you. 
so that you can know how to go and do it. Also, you can thank God for his word. Thank him for encouraging you. Tell him again that you Tell, tell him again and thank him for what you have learned. That's step number four. Pray again. Pray again. And the last step is do. In scripture we call it do. It is so important to put into practice what the Lord is teaching you through quiet time. It could be a habit he wants you to stop and actually wants you to take. It could be a note that God wants you to obey. It could be it could be something that God wants you to stop doing. Uh, James chapter 1 verse 22 tells us this. Do not merely be listeners of the word. Don't just listen. And when you only listen, you're deceiving yourself. You're like a man who looks at himself in a mirror and quickly forgets how he looks like. You know, men, when a man looks at a mirror, he just says, hey, you been poor here. He goes away. But a woman, when she looks at the mirror, she has to ensure that her lips are like this, her pimple like, if you tell a woman that you have a pimple here, the whole day she'll be thinking about it. Eh? Tell a man that you have something here. But a woman, tell her you have something here. She'll hum a hanky, you know, she'll look for a hanky, and then she'll clean, clean, clean. So please, don't just be mere listeners. Be doers of the word of God. You're looking at the mirror. And the mirror gives an image of who you are. So how do we do quiet time? Step number one, you pray to God that he may speak to you. Step number two, you open your Bible using your devotional and you read. Step number three, you think. As you're thinking, as you're reading the word of God, you're writing down what God is speaking to you. God really wants to speak to you. God really wants to share with you. Step number four is you pray again. Either you're thanking him for what he has spoken to you or you're asking him to help you do what he has spoken to you. And step number five is going to do. I hope from today you can set aside some time to do quiet time and learn from God. Thank you so much. Till next time, God bless you. Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love.